Multiplying by the kanji is one of the more difficult methods to solve limits, but it's definitely necessary that you learn this or you will miss many problems on your calculus tests. So when do you have uh, when when you know when you have to multiply by the conjugate? Well, whenever you see limits with square roots, that's the tip. That's that's the trick. You know if you see a square root, you have to multiply by the conjugate. Um, so let me show you what happens if you don't multiply by the conjugate. What I always say is, the first thing I do is I just plug in the number and I see what happens. So if I were to plug in 9 for x, I'd have 3 minus the square root of 9 over 9 minus 9. And that would be 3 minus the square root of 9 is 3 over 9 minus 9. And that will be 0 over 0. Now, 0 over 0 is what we call indeterminate. We don't know what it is. We cannot determine the value. And uh, it's not good enough to leave your answer like that. So we need to do algebra. <laughs> Whenever you get 0 over 0, we have to do algebra. And in this case, that algebra technique is multiplying by the conjugate. So I keep saying conjugate. What is the conjugate? Well, the conjugate is the exact same thing, but flipping the sign in the middle, only the middle. Don't flip any other signs. So I'm going to multiply by the exact same thing, but with the sign flipped. Okay, so at 3 minus square root of x, the conjugate would be 3 plus the square root of x. But I'm not allowed to just multiply by that thing out of thin air. The only thing I'm allowed to do algebraically is multiply by one, right? I'm allowed to multiply things by one because they give me the same value. So I can't just multiply by three plus square root of x. I need to multiply by three plus square root of x over three plus square root of x because this whole term is 1 and I'm allowed to multiply by 1. So let's let's see what happens once I do this. Equals and you should technically write limit every time until you actually plug in the number. I see a lot of students they leave this go and then some professors will mark that wrong. So I would recommend to write limit every single step until you plug in that 9. Well, on the bottom uh, the part that's not the conjugate, you should always just mash them together. Just write those two things next to each other and it'll save you a lot of stress. Or what I mean is don't distribute this. Don't foil this through. The only thing that we're going to foil is the conjugate part. So let me do, let me do that. Let me foil this. So foil says first, 3 times 3 is 9. Inner. That's minus root x times 3. That's minus 3 root x. Outer, 3 times root x is plus 3 square root of x. And then I've got last minus root x times plus root x. That'll be minus, well, root x times root x just gives me x. At this point, I simplify the numerator. I've got 9, and would you look at that, I've got minus 3 root x plus 3 root x. They'll cancel each other out. I'll just be left with 9 minus x in the numerator. And maybe you can already see what's going to happen. All right. So just by doing some algebraic manipulation, I've changed this to a much prettier, well, maybe it's not prettier, but a much easier thing to work with because I'm going to be able to cancel these 9 minus x's. So why did this work? Um, well, you'll notice this. 3 minus something times 3 plus something, or when I multiply something by its conjugate, that's what we call a difference of squares in algebra. So in algebra, the difference of squares equation looked like this. And it yielded the result x squared minus y squared. So this is what we just did. And if you foil this out, you'll see you do in fact get this, just like I demonstrated up here. So often what 
most people remember to do in calculus. They don't actually FOIL this out. I did this just for demonstration purposes. Most of the time what people do is they just square the first one, 3 squared is 9, minus square the second one, square root of x squared is x. And that's what I would recommend that you do too. So don't do this FOIL process every time. It's gonna, it's, you're gonna, you're gonna waste some time. So just square the first term minus square the second term. And after you do that, you might have to um, simplify the numerator at this point sometimes. In this case, I didn't have to, but sometimes you might have to uh, combine, like do like nine minus five or something. Uh, in this example, I don't have to. And what happens, you'll see why I didn't distribute the denominator because I can just cancel the nine minus x's. And when I do that, when you cancel the thing in the denominator, this is what I'm left with. After I cancel, now I'm gonna plug in my nine for my x. And now I no longer have to write limit. I'll just plug in the number, that'll be three plus square root of nine, which is square root of nine is three. So I've got one over three plus three, or one sixth would be the answer to this limit problem. So whenever you're doing limits and you see square root, you want to multiply by the conjugate, you'll do a difference of squares, simplify the numerator, and then plug in your value. That'll give you your answer almost every single time. Thanks for watching.